let's start with the basic functions of the Pico Core. The four knobs, you have a selector, which allows you to select one of the eight parameters, and it shows which one you're on by the red light, selecting one through eight. And then you have uh, parameter A and parameter B, pretty much the two parts of whatever page that you're on. Uh, and then the last knob is a global filter volume kind of a thing to shape the, the sound of the, the device a little bit. So to start it, you can hit the last four buttons. This is start and stop. So pretty much I'll start on number one and I'll tell you what all the different things do on each different page. So the, the first selector being on one is you get sample and what they call break. So sample chooses all of the samples that are in it. It'll hold up to eight minutes of monophonic, uh, eight bit, 33K, I think audio. It doesn't sound as eight bit as you think it does. It actually sounds a lot better into my ears. But going back to the samples, I have, I, I raced the stock samples and I put my own stuff on here. So I think there's like, 120 or so something samples on here that I cut and I, I flew in through USB and maybe I'll explain that in a different part of the video but so if I'm on number one and I hit play so this knob is going to select all the different samples next knob is what they call break so pretty much this mangles all the rest of the parameters on the different pages at random and this is pretty much a probability of how much it's going to do that so let me start down uh, towards the zero So it gets pretty chaotic pretty quickly um, and that's just on the first page and then like I said this is a volume and like a filter. It's good to make stuff like less bright and stuff like that but I normally just crank it all the way and then do the EQing and different things on a, a separate part of the mixer or something like that. So the second page uh, is a filter. Let's go to the second one. So the first parameter on the second page is filter, and the second parameter is a stretch. It's kind of like a pitch down, actually. I don't find myself using that one as much uh, all the time. I kind of use that for special stuff, but um, it, it is a pretty cool effect. Okay, the third one is a gate, so let's go to number three. And then this is pretty much, it gates every step. So on this page, this is the gate amount, and this is the probability of how much it's going to happen. Okay, so uh, number four, number four is a jump. Um, so jumping pretty much is going to allow you to rearrange the the, the, the loop so right off the bat it plays one through eight but what jump does it's going to allow you to jump to different spots in the loop so check this out you'll notice that all the leds are going different directions because it's jumping so this is the amount of jump So for example, all the way up, it's just everything's out of order. And I'm just going to go back and switch samples uh, so you can hear some, they work on something differently. Okay, so 
let's go back to number four and I'll adjust that jump again. Okay, and so with the buttons, if you hold them down, let me, let me get off of the jump mode. If you hold a button down, it'll repeat that step. Okay, so when you're on number four, this is actually gonna, uh, it's gonna re-trigger kind of like based on probability. So check this out. Zero is no re-triggering, and all the way up is like everything getting twisted and re-triggered. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Number five is called tunneling, and what tunneling is, it's going to skip to the same point on, on different loops that are stored in here. So if I barely turn up parameter A, it's going to start switching out the second beats of snares and the third beats of hi-hats and the first beats of kicks. Check it out. So if I go all the way down, it's none. And if I go all the way up, everything starts to get rearranged. And I like number five too because the second parameter becomes a reverse probability. So uh, that was pretty much all of the effects. Um, number six is a sequencer recorder that I'm not going to get into right this second. Seven is saving. So pretty much if I went to seven, six, seven, if I turn this all the way clockwise, it's going to save whatever I have going on. And then I can mess around again and, and the parameter B will, will recall it. Um, I like what I have saved originally before I started this because I was working on something, but I'm not going to save it right this second. Um, and then lastly, you have tempo. So if I go to eight and I start it up again. allow you to go from I think 50 to 300 something like that and then on this page I think this one is like a volume distortion wave folder something like that Uh, 
Yeah, it almost like adjusts volume before the bits or something. I don't know. I think somewhere in the middle sounds about right to me most of the time. Sometimes I'll turn it up. That sounds cool. So yeah, those are the main functions. If you hit the, the these these at the same time, it starts and stops it. If you hit the middle at the same time, it does a thing where if you hit a re-trigger, it will start from that same point. But if you hit this, these four buttons, it goes into a mode where the clock is kind of always on. So you can do stuff and that kick is always going to land back on the one. So that's what we've been listening to this whole time. I, I, I have it on that mode like all the time. That's part of the reason I like to save it because that stays right when I turn it on. It's just, it's always on. So when you're syncing it, it stays truer to the one more. So I like that. So those are the basic functions. So infinitedigits.co, uh, you can find all the information. This is all the stuff that I use to get my Pico Core up and running and uh, get the firmware updated and put all my own samples on there. And there's all types of cool stuff that Zach has put up for everybody. There's just oodles of information about this thing um, on this page. So when I was building it and kind of modifying it, I was on this page on the daily just trying to absorb everything that he's put up here so there's a lot of great stuff um, definitely bookmark it if you're doing pico core stuff iPhone photo of when I first started. I didn't have any components on it except for the resistors in place. On the left I have the caps, the resistors, the uh, clock out, the clock in, and the voltage regulator and the transistor all ready to go. So pretty much at this point I started thinking about how I was going to bring the uh, pots and the switches and the LEDs out to the metal enclosure. So on the right, you can see I did use spare stuff that I had in a drawer to wire this up. I didn't really know how excited I was going to be about the Pico core yet, so I was just kind of whipping it together. So now I have the uh, I have the actual Pico core mounted inside of the box. I pretty much screwed in some cardboard just so nothing would ground out on the metal case. And then you can see in this one, I still had the itty bitty midi, um, which is the passive unit that I learned how to make straight off Zach's site. And you use three pins of the five pin DIN input. And you can see that that's wired to that little circuit board there near the battery. So I messed with it for a little bit and I used it with some of my gear. So I ended up removing that after a week or two just because I tried the other way and I, and I liked it a lot better. All right, let me bring you through how I recreated the pulse from a pocket operator, which I don't own. So I'm in Pro Tools and I ripped some pink or brown noise. I forget which one I ended up using right this second. And I chopped it down to about 30 milliseconds. And uh, and then I, I made them at, at, at eighth notes. So there are two pulses per quarter note. Let me zoom out and show you. There's all the little blips. Sorry, I just had to zoom out with one hand. There's all the little blips on eighth notes. So I got a click set up, and I'm using just a desktop Apollo right now. I have the pulse right there, pulse coming out of output three. So out of three, the purple cable goes into the back of the Pico core, the clock in right there, and then. Um, I'm gonna hit play so that you guys can see this thing kind of start and stop really accurately with this little pulse. Let me show you. So 
so super nice and accurate. You can pretty much, I'm one-handing it right now, but you can pretty much really mess with every bit of effects and tunneling and jumping and different BPMs of different samples. And this pulse will lock it all together better than the itty bitty MIDI worked in my experience. So yeah, I took that out, put in the clock sync, and now you can rip it with your DAW, any uh, MPC, anything with an output that you can put this pulse on, your Pico Core will sync.